Okay. I never forget a lot of stuff. You, where were you when you first, because you spoke about the East Coast, West Coast uh, war. Where were you when you first kind of heard that there was a problem? Where, where, where were you? Man, uh, in New York, when um, in the studio, when um, uh, when the source awards were right there in New York City. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, we're writing. So at the time we weren't out. But we were writing and producing for other, like for other artists. So you know, we don't have we don't have the clout or anything like that. So and you know, you can't give but so many tickets. So you know, so we doing our thing. But we have them. You know, you know how Daddy's house is made. You can look at and see everything. You know what I mean? Is the TVs are right there. Mm -hmm. So all of a sudden, you know, which is our boy. This is our dog. You know what I'm saying? Snoop <laughs> comes out. You know. And then, you know, he was like, y'all don't have any, I know love for Snoop Dogg. Y'all don't have no love for Death Row. You know what I'm saying? So, man, you know, it was crazy. You know, now, us being from the South, of course we do. Man, the great, uh, the great uh, Afeni Shakir stayed in, in Atlanta. You know what I'm saying? So Tupac is huge in Atlanta. You feel me? Snoop is huge. You know what I'm saying? So our energies, as far as what we what we listen to, you know, radio was different. You know, everybody had regions. So you, if you're in New York, you heard a lot of New York stuff. That's why I think we we had an advantage of coming from Atlanta to New York. Mm -hmm. So you hear the different feels in Atlanta. Our radio was different from Hot 97. Or, you know what I'm saying, you know what I'm saying, 105. You know what I mean? It, it was crazy. It was, like, different. So, you know, so I, could, I didn't get it at first. I'm like, oh, he might just be popping. He just popping this shit, you know, whatever. But then the crowd, was, it was starting to feel a certain kind of way. And then, and then all of a sudden when Shook had came out there and was like, yo, if you don't see cats dancing in, in all in the videos and now – you know, it's starting to feel a little certain kind of a way. You feel me? So it's like, oh, okay. You know, that's when I was like, man, I don't think this is going to end. This, this ain't, uh, you know what I mean? They, they ain't joking. You know what I'm saying? This ain't funny. Now, 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 now you're an R&B artist. Do you feel like yeah. you don't have to worry about that kind of beef? You're insulated from it? It don't have nothing to do with you? Or are you on point now? Are you... Are you saying like I gotta look over my shoulder because I'm I'm a bad boy? <laughs> well, I mean it's a family. So just because you know, so us being from the South, our whole culture is to stay in our lane. We stay in our lane and you know what I mean, it's all good. But we also have what you call the family rule. So if I'm at the spot and you and you push or you sock my cousin you now have problems with the family. You feel me? So mm -hmm. that's the type of feel that we were like, man, you know, like, but, but then when we met them, cause we were doing shows with them. It was none of that. You know what I'm saying? Like I was really cool with the, the lead singer of the outlaws. When he come down to Atlanta, I'm kicking it with him, man. Corrupt Das, Those are my homies to this day. Like, you know what I'm saying? So it was and Snoop, same thing. No problem. So I, I ain't a front man. I think, to tell you the truth, I'm going to keep it all the way 1,000. When that magazine came out, I think, I don't know which one it was, where it said East Coast, West Coast, I think it put the more steam on the people reading the media, reading what's going on, and it put steam into that situation because we weren't having problems with the actual artists, not at all. It was the people when we come into certain regions. That's when we start having issues. Hmm. So did did, did one twelve ever have an issue during that during that time? No, no, nah, because I mean, we we were blessed to have um, people that were very connected to the you know what I'm saying the streets, no matter where we sat. sat. So you know what I mean. Uh, we were blessed. We were, we were blessed that you know we never had those type of situations. Wow. So big shots so out to our crew. Now, 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 you go a little further on in time, and we go to Los Angeles, and Biggie being out in Los Angeles. 
Were yeah, you, we were there were, too. Were you aware that Big was out in LA? And did did, or did you did anybody go to him and say, "Yo, Big, I don't think you should be out there, bro." No, no. I mean, well, when we came out there, now remember, we were on the stage when the the infamous he said, "What's up, Cali?" You know what I'm saying? We were on the stage. If you look at it, it was Biggie, us, and Brian McKnight. So we heard that we 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 feel the energy. Now, with us, 112, we go do what we gotta do, we go back to our room. You know what I'm saying? Like, and we when we come out, it's time to go do what we had to do. At that time, we knew we had to do that was the Soul Train uh, Awards or something like that. And then we had to get on a jet and go to the University of Arizona because we had to do a homecoming. So I'm going to tell you right now, we were more co concentrated on the great energy. Man, Big was so happy because it was like we've been working so hard and just listening. He was listening to his album. You know what I mean? Man, Life After Death. And he was like ecstatic. Oh, my God, man. This, this album is about to be amazing. So... It was just like we were right there with him, like you feeling it, like oh man, you know. But then right after the awards, we didn't go out. We had to get on the jet, go to the University of Arizona. Mm -hmm. A couple of hours later, we get a phone call saying that he's not here anymore. Wow. Now, now, how how long? So you're, you're digesting that this is a good friend, this is a family member. How long was it before you guys recorded I'll Be Watching? I'll Be Missing You? I mean, I'll so, be Excuse me, I'll Be Missing so, um, It took a couple of months because, you know, rightfully so, um, Puff had lost his best friend. Anybody, hey, anybody knew, though, they were best friends. They, I mean, it's crazy. So for a little bit, like, the, the office, the place was closed. The office is closed. Now, Cupid is out. Hypnotize is out. Cupid is out. We were in the top 10. We had to make a decision. Yo, are we going to uh, continue to, are we going to promote our record? Because we got a, we got a single. We got Cupid out. It's doing explosively well. We don't want to turn our backs on the radio and stuff like that. But at the same time, you know, Things were really kind of touchy, you know what I'm saying? And I ain't gonna front, we had to put our trust in God at this one. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. We had to put our trust in God and say, look, you know, God got us. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is crazy right here. And I just don't think that big would have uh, wanted us to quit or stop. You know what I'm saying? So we were on the road. We were still on the road. So we were still doing our thing. And you know what I'm saying? We were still representing Bad Boy to the fullest. And then we got a phone call from Puff saying, yo, well, we as a family, we all going to come together. Let's, let's do something. Wow. Let me just tell you something. It's rare when I'm dialed in to like every word that somebody's saying during the interview. Sometimes I'm thinking about trees. Sometimes I'm thinking about dead animals on the floor, whatever. I have been so yeah. dialed in with what you're saying. Like everything about it just takes me back to that time. Last question on this, and then we're going to get into your new music. Do you remember yeah. your last conversation with Biggie? It was the, the last conversation with Biggie was when we were on the stage. And he was like, um, when he said, what's up, Callie? And um, everybody was kind of booing. And then, you know, uh, he had said we had to say whatever. And then right before we um, went off the stage, you know, he turned around and looked at us and said, Man, we want to get the hell up out of here. Do you think do you think you guys should have been out there? Do you think it was a bad move to be out there? Nah. You know why? Because I feel like that, you know, what God has in store, we don't know. We're not in control. It's not up to man. You see what I'm saying? Like, obviously, God put the star, you know what I'm saying? He aligned everything together. You know what I'm saying? To where you know, where we were supposed to be where we were. And it's like, for me, you know, a, a part of the healing, it, it was aggressive to just to know, like, that was your, your our biggest brother, and he was our, one of our biggest fans ever. 
ever. Like you can see how many times he let how many times he put our names in his songs. Who you know what I mean? Me. He had a wild respect. Yeah, he had a wild respect for us. Man, I look we just looked at it like this, man. Like he just he his his energy, his spirit lives on and he's with us. You know what I'm saying? Regardless, you know, but you know, it, it's just like not only the notorious B.I.G., but for Tupac to be gone too. You know what I'm saying? Like you had two people. First of all, I met we met Tupac. Biggie and Tupac were friends. Were friends. Okay, like hey man, he joked, brought me over to Tupac and said, "Look at your little brother. Look at your twin. Look at your little brother." You know what I'm saying? Wow. Like that. So to know that they were friends. And then both of them are gone. You know what I'm saying? Crazy. Mm. Batman scoop.